Hi guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. Um, Chuck is out, so it's going to be me and Kevin again today doing the weekly update. Kevin's going to show you some freshwater picks that he chose, and then I'm going to show you some of my saltwater stuff. As always, we are getting another shipment in on Friday as well, so keep checking on Facebook for those posts of those pictures of the fish that we get in. Um, up first, Kevin is going to show you his top picks of the freshwater fish this week. Hi, it's Kevin. I'm here to show you some of the nice freshwater fish we got in today. We got a lot of new arrivals in and we've got a couple trade-ins as well. We've got in the South American puffers. These puffers are not a brackish water puffer. They're a total freshwater puffer. They do get larger than your bumblebee puffers and a little more aggressive, of course. Be very careful choosing tank mates with any puffer because they do have the propensity to bite chunks of flesh out of other fish. Excellent for a species tank. These are Coste Tetras. These are kind of rare to be imported into the United States. They're not commonly seen in most stores. So I wanted to brag about them while I got them. They've got a cool little racing stripe that goes upwards down the tail, making it a really unique little fish. I've got in some coral red Serpe Tetras in. This is a different color more from your common Serpe Tetra. These have like a pinkish coral color to them. Also kind of a translucent fish and also has kind of glittering on the scales that really stand out, kind of like a diamond tetra. We've got in some beautiful gold lyre tail mollies. These were locally raised by one of my regular people, Cami. She brought them in the other day. They look great. These are the Buenos Aires tetras. These are one of the most durable tetras, excellent starter fish. They get kind of large. They are not like your regular tetra. They are a semi-aggressive fish and they are bad fin nippers, do best with tank mates such as large barbs and other things with a little bit of a nasty disposition. We've got in the yellowfin chalcius. These are a more colorful variant of the pink tail chalcius, one of my personal favorites. They are an import. I've got six of them in today. They look really nice. I got in probably the best looking batch of turquoise rainbows that I've gotten in in a while. They're actually turquoise. Got brilliant color. Now that it's starting to cool off, I'm hoping to see more plentiful varieties of rainbows coming in as well as better quality than what we were looking at in the summertime. These look excellent. Last but not least, I wanted to showcase the rest of the pond fish that I got left. I really want to get them outside as soon as possible because it's starting to get colder. We're running all of our pond fish on sale 25% off. We've got all of our comments, shabunkins, and koi included in that. 25% off only for the next couple weeks to try to clear them out and move them on out into your pond and out of our tank. All right, guys, so my first pick for the salt water this week is going to be this absolutely gorgeous clown trigger. This one is more on the smaller side, um, probably about four inches long. These guys get fairly large. They get 12 inches. Even some have been recorded at 14 inches in size. So they get very big. Um, clown triggers are one of the most popular just based off, off of their gorgeous coloration and all of that pattern of spotting and stuff on their bodies. When they get full grown, they'll actually get pink tints in their fins. So that's something really cool about the clown triggers as they get older is they'll change color a little bit. Um, clown triggers are one of the more aggressive trigger fish species. So if we do want to try this guy, I would definitely recommend a Fowler tank as well as other larger bodied, more aggressive predatory fish to live inside of the tank with them. All right guys, so it's been a long time since I've had any lionfish and so I got one in today. This is a juvenile Antonada lionfish. So the Antonadas don't get as large as um, other lionfish like your volatins. So this guy will stay a little bit smaller, larger than your dwarfs, but a good medium sized lion. So if you don't have a huge, huge tank for a volatin, an Antonada is gonna be a really good choice for you. Um, this guy has really nice coloration, orange and red. You'll notice on his um, pectoral fins, he's even got some spots. Those act as eye spots, so predators will see that and think that's its eyes. Swim up, but the um, lionfish will actually be able to see him because he's gonna try to trick his predator. So then he'll be able to get away. Lionfish also, for those of you that are not aware, are venomous. So if we want to try a lionfish, be careful, make sure that we don't touch him with our hands. Lionfish too, it's kind of hard to get them transitioned over to frozen. It's not impossible. It takes a little bit of time and some patience. 
So to start these guys off feeding, ghost shrimp is going to be a great choice, but Antonado lionfish are on the top of my list. So I know we talked about these leopard grasses last week, but I absolutely love them so much that I got more of them in. I had more than two earlier today, and I've already, or yesterday, and I've already sold some. So come get them while I have them. Leopard grasses aren't something that I can get every week. Like I said last week, they are incredibly beautiful and incredibly peaceful. And like you see here, you can actually keep a group of them together. So if you're looking for a wrasse that you can keep multiples of, leopard wrasses are going to be absolutely perfect. And they're also incredible reef inhabitants as well. Now, leopard wrasses, when they sleep, will actually completely bury themselves in the sand. So if you wake up in the morning or go to bed at night and you can't find your leopard grass, don't fret, he's probably just buried in the sand. But leopard grasses are one of my top grass choices for any type of tank. So I usually don't point out clowns in this video, but I got in an absolutely stunning, a really dark maroon clown. Um, maroon clowns can be a little bit more aggressive than some of your others like Ocellaris. So be careful um, if you want to try this guy. Now this one is stunning, it has pearl eyes. So it actually has that whitish blue spot on top of both of his eyes. And I can't say this with 100% certainty, but it does kind of look like he's starting to get gold in those white stripes. So this guy might even be a juvenile gold stripe maroon. There's really no way to tell until he gets older, but this is an absolutely gorgeous maroon con, and I haven't seen any this dark in a very long time. So we're gonna talk about these funky little zombie looking fish. These guys are called pajama cardinals. Now, pajama cardinals are one of the most peaceful saltwater fish that you can get. They do very well in peaceful community type tanks. These guys, as you're looking at them, you'll realize they don't do a whole lot of swimming. They do typically just kind of hang out in the water column and in your tank. These guys are going to prefer the upper part of the water column to just kind of hang out. These guys have bright red eyes, they have stripes, they have polka dots, they got a lot going on and they're a very unique looking fish. So if you're looking for something incredibly peaceful to fill up the upper part of your tank in that upper water column, the pajama cardinals are going to be an excellent, excellent choice. So I'm going to show off this guy and I'm going to be biased. Um, this is a pink spot watchman goby. Pink spot watchman gobies are one of my absolute favorite gobies of all time ever, ever. Um, the pink spot watchmans do get a little bit larger. They're a larger bodied watchman goby. This is one of the gobies that does not play well with other gobies, so make sure that he is kept by himself, but he has electric hot pink spots on his face. You can call him freckles. He's got spots on his upper fin. He's got stripes on his tail fin and his caudal fin. Very personable fish. This specimen in particular always swims up to the glass, eats super, super well. Such a personality on this fish. You guys need to come get them because if not for real, I'm taking them home and I'm going to set up a tank just so I can take them home. So you guys come get them so that I don't get in trouble. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I finally, 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 finally have peppermint shrimp back in stock. Um, it is not the season for peppermint shrimp, which is why I have not been able to get them in in months. But one of our vendors actually had some, so I got a lot of peppermint shrimp. Come get them while I have them because once these guys are gone, I have no idea how long it's going to take for me to get any more in. These guys do a very good job of eating Aptasia. So if you see Aptasia in your tank, come grab a couple peppermint shrimp. The other specimen in this tank are the sand sifting starfish. Sand sifting starfish are incredible. They're one of the only quote unquote reef safe starfish that you can have in your tank. A lot of times you won't even see them because they're gonna be buried in the sand doing exactly what their name um, describes, sand sifting. These guys are gonna help clean the sand. They're gonna burrow underneath the surface, so they're also aerating your substrate as well. If you're looking for something to keep your sand that really nice white color instead of getting some algae on it, come grab a sand sifting starfish. So I actually have a product or products, a type of thing that I'm gonna show you in this week's video. And this is all artificial coral. So if you look, um, we have coral in all different colors, all different types hard coral, plate coral, you know, some softer things, maybe lobos that these are supposed to look like. This is made more out of rubber. This is more plasticky and it might can move in the um, wave makers that you have in your tank. So for those of you that like to have fowler fish such as trigger fish or larger bodied wrasses that like to nip on certain sessile invertebrates, 
angelfish, any type of non-reef safe fish. If you're tired of just having that rock, whether it be carob seed, life rock, shapes rock, it doesn't matter. You want color in your tank, light like coral provides. These are gonna be the perfect things for you to come grab. We use a lot of these in our service accounts around um, Columbia and, and you know other places as well. They're very easy to clean, and so if you're looking for that coral reef look, and you can't put actual coral in your tank because of the fish you have, or you just don't wanna worry about coral, come get some of these really different, cool, colorful, um, fake corals. We have a lot more than this. These are just um, my favorites that I pulled from the shelf based off of color and things like that. If you're looking for something like this, come on in. We have entire shelves of it, so we can help you pick out what's best for your tank. All right, guys, well, that's it for this weekly update. Um, there are a couple things I wanted to add real quickly before I sign off. Um, don't forget, November 6th, it's upcoming, um, it's a Saturday, there's gonna be a coral reef show right here in Columbia, it's called the Carolina Reef Experience. Um, we're gonna be there, we're gonna have a booth, we're gonna be selling some gorgeous pieces of coral, we're gonna have tanks, we're gonna have stands and canopies, we're gonna have whole package deal setups available to you guys. So make sure that you um, buy a ticket and that you come out to the Carolina Reef Experience, there's gonna be so many vendors there. Um, but definitely come there, check us out to, you know, grab any of the stuff we're going to have there at the show. Also, you only have a couple days left to enter to win the BioCube setup. Um, we're doing the drawing after we close on October 31st on Halloween, so this Sunday, after we close. So you only have the rest of this week and Sunday left to come in and get a ticket to enter to win that BioCube. So make sure that you do that before time runs out. Um, all right, that's it for this week. Um, definitely come in. Um, Chuck always says that was just a couple highlights of the fresh and salt water. We have plenty, plenty more, and we are still trying to figure out and decide what we want to do with the front pond. So keep sending in whether you think koi or salt water. At some point, we will let you know what we decide to do with that. Um, but thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you here in the store, and stay tuned to Fishy Business.